107. Humanistic Doctrines of Sin Calcedon Report, No. 174, February 1980 The purpose of all law is to set forth the doctrine of justice or righteousness and to punish injustice or sin. When a society's doctrine of righteousness and sin changes, its laws also change. Every social order has a doctrine of law, of justice and injustice, and the source of that doctrine is in its religion. In our day, because humanism is the established religion of the modern state, our law is in process of change because we have a new definition of the meaning of righteousness and sin. The biblical doctrine of sin holds that all men are sinners by virtue of their birth into the humanity of Adam. Only by rebirth into the new humanity of Jesus Christ are they transferred to a life of righteousness, although not perfectly sanctified in this lifetime. Thus, sin and righteousness are attributes of birth and rebirth. Humanism, too, has doctrines of sin by birth. To cite some examples of this, many hold that it is a sin to be born rich and to remain rich. Richness is seen as a form of depravity. The same doctrine holds that to be born into the middle class involves a similar taint which only mass destruction or perhaps re-education can remove. Likewise, to be born poor is to be born deprived, tainted, and by definition oppressed. It is a taint which, for many, only revolution or great social upheavals can remove. But this is not all. There is also added to this burden of guilt a racial guilt. To be born white is held to be an example of sin. It means an immediate inheritance of centuries of supposed guilt, expletive propensities and assumed arrogance. The white man is told he should feel guilty. The black man has a similar guilt trip laid on him. He is told that he is by nature inferior, or that the white man has made him inferior and exploited him, and that he is a betrayer of his race and destiny if he works, minds his business and enjoys life. Wherever he turns, a guilt trip is laid on him. The same is true of every racial and national group. False pride and false guilt are posited, and a false doctrine of sin which blames others for their past and then for failure to become engines of revolution. The same is true of the sexes. One feminist leader has written a book on the supposed fact that all men are by nature rapists, and the idiot clergy have given favourable reviews to the book, thereby telling more about themselves than about reality in general. The feminists tell men they are by nature and history guilty, and the women that they are guilty for being women in the biblical sense. Humanistic male supremacists work to make women feel inferior and guilty, and godly men to feel weak and foolish. The point is sufficiently clear. All men have a doctrine of sin or injustice. The Bible declares, Sin is the transgression of the law, God's law. 1 John chapter 3 verse 4 For the humanist, sin is not an offence against God's unchanging law, but against man's changing standards. The relief of sin is by law. For the Christian, salvation, as received by man, is by God's sovereign grace alone, but it is all the same an act of law. The atonement of Jesus Christ is our salvation and justification, and it is the satisfaction of God's unchanging law, of God's death penalty against man. Thus, in the economy of the Trinity, our salvation is an act of law, a fact set forth in the doctrines of atonement and justification. In the experience and life of man, salvation is an act of sovereign grace. Thus, salvation is both an act of law and an act of grace. To deny one part of this fact is to undermine the other. For humanism, too, 
salvation is an act of law, but status law, and it is also an act of grace. The law of the state is a changing law, however. Daily, thousands of pages of new laws are added to city, county, state and congressional codes, and to the Federal Register. As against one unchanging book which all can read and understand, we have, with humanism, a jungle of laws, a volume upon volume, by the tens of thousands, which none can read in full or understand. Courts and commissions regularly alter their meaning, and no man can escape being in violation of many of them. Moreover, the grace of the state is purely external. It grants funds, subsidies and privileges, but it does not touch the nature of man. By its externalism, it aggravates and feeds man's sin and increases social decadence and disintegration. The humanistic doctrine of law becomes a form of social suicide. When God declares, Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17 He did not mean a merely ecclesiastical separation, but one governing our total life. Having given us his law, he certainly does not countenance our, quote, concord, end quote, with humanistic law, 